Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to build an optical theremin. Now, many of you have heard of a normal theremin before. And a normal theremin is an instrument, a musical instrument, that has two antennas, one going up and one going to the side. And what happens is these antennas are tuned to a certain frequency as an internal oscillator. And then when you move your hand closer to the antenna, it changes the resonant frequency of one of the radio frequency oscillators. And the resulting difference between the two radio frequencies is the sound you hear when you move your hand closer and farther away. This means that without even touching the instrument, you can move your hand close to an antenna and actually play a cool song. Now, I wanted to build one of these too, but building a radio frequency oscillator and multiple of them is a little bit complicated, and even though I could build one at the moment, I chose to build a simpler option, and I will most likely be showing you how to build a real theremin in a later video. Now, the theremin I built is based off a concept I showed in a previous video. It is using um, a light-dependent resistor as part of a 555 timer oscillator to actually modulate the frequency that a 555 timer is putting out based on how far your hand is from the actual light-dependent resistor. Now, this changes the frequency of the 555 timer. Now, the issue with that circuit that I showed in my previous video was that as I moved my hand closer, it just gave a uniform pitch. Now, this is fine because it does what it's supposed to do, but a real theremin sounds different. It has this warbling um, effect to the sound that makes it sound really cool. It's this a slight modulation and change of frequency. So I wanted to build a circuit that has this warbling warm sound effect of a normal theremin, but uses the optical component that I have built in this circuit. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build an optical theremin from start to finish. So let's get started. Now to build this optical theremin, we'll need to have two separate circuits. One circuit will be an oscillator that changes frequency based on the input from a light dependent resistor. And the second circuit is going to be another oscillator that uses a 555 timer. And what that does is it connects to an LED light that flashes at a certain frequency um, based on a potentiometer inside the oscillator. And that will produce light coming out of this um, LED that is pulsed. Now, this pulsed light bounces off your hand when you move your hand towards this light-dependent resistor. And this small, dim, pulsed light modulates the frequency of the light-dependent resistor inside the 555 timer oscillator circuit. And this is what gets the warbling tone that is commonly heard in most theremins. So, to build this optical theremin, the most important part is the variable frequency oscillator that changes based on uh, how close your hand is to the light dependent resistor and how much light is on it. Now, what happens is the electricity from the 5 volt power supply charges these capacitors through these two resistors, and when that voltage reaches a certain threshold, it triggers it to drain the uh, capacitor back to ground. And what happens is these changes in voltage are converted into this pin 3 going high or low in a square wave type format. Now what happens is when this light dependent resistor changes uh, its resistance, it changes the frequency because it changes how fast this capacitor charges and discharges. Now this is the first part of the circuit, the variable frequency oscillator. Now this right here is what powers the LED. You will notice a lot of similarities between these two circuits, and you are right. The only thing that makes this circuit different from this circuit is the fact that it has an LED and a 100 ohm resistor, and the capacitor is 10 microfarads instead of 100 nanofarads, and there is no light dependent resistor, just a potentiometer. Now what this does is it makes it so um, this goes at a much slower rate because it has a larger capacitor, which means it takes longer to charge. And we can vary the frequency of the LED based on the resistance of this potentiometer. So we will take these two circuits and put them together to the same power supply. And we will put the LED next to the light dependent resistor. And we should get something that actually sounds like a theremin. So let's build this. Always a good idea to test out your circuit on a breadboard before you actually uh, solder it onto a piece of perfboard. So I built this circuit. As you can see, it has the two 555 timers, capacitors, resistors, light dependent resistor. 
and this circuit works. I have tested it on my power supply, and I have used my hand, and it actually sounds really cool. It sounds like this. So now that we know that this uh, optical theremin circuit actually works, we can start to transfer it onto a piece of perf board. Here is one half of the circuit actually soldered to a piece of uh, perf board. This is the variable frequency oscillator circuit. Now, you may recognize this from my one of my previous videos where I show you how to make an uh, instrument that can change differences in the light into differences in sound. That is what this theremin will be doing. We are just going to be adding another circuit right here. Now we're going to be adding another 555 timer potentiometer and an LED poking out right here. And we will do this by inserting all the components and soldering them. We will also connect all the traces very similarly to how we did on this 555 timer circuit. Now when we're done, we should have the other circuit right here and all the electronic components over here. And it will be connected to the same power supply on batteries so this thing can be portable. Now, let's take this circuit and build it on here. I'll do a time lapse. Now, after all that work, you should have your optical theremin all done. Now, all the components inside here are wired in such a way that all the connections are almost equal to all the connections that are on the circuit diagram. As you can see, we have the two 555 timers and all of the other circuit chips. And everything runs off these two AA batteries. So now, let's test this thing out. We'll insert the two AA batteries. And as you can see, the light starts flashing, which is the right frequency that this theremin needs to be operating at. Now, it's time to test your optical theremin. So as you can see, I have my optical theremin circuit board right here. And I have taken this sticky note and used some black sharpie to cover up a little segment of it. So that way I can cover the LED and reduce some of its brightness and noise. I will eventually fix this in the circuit by adding a larger resistor between the power supply and the LED. But for now, I'll just use this piece of paper. Now, this theremin requires very specific lighting sources in order for it to function properly. As you can see over here, I have one small lamp in the corner of my room. And this lamp will be providing the only light source um, in my room. Because the issue is, if you have too many light sources going around, then all the light will be bouncing and hitting the theremin equally, and you won't be able to control the pitch as well using your hand as a, as a means to produce shadows on the theremin. So you have to have one specific light source, as you can see over there. Now, to hear the actual theremin, I've hooked it up to my large stereo system that you can see in a previous video. So I'll turn that on, and we'll fire up the theremin and see what we can hear. So as you can hear, the theremin is working exactly as expected. When I move my hand, there's a shadow in front of the LDR. As you can hear, it changes pitch. I can even change the pitch of the LED to change the tremolo effect of the uh, audio source. I find this to be the best one. As you can see, I can now move my hand around and I can kind of play a song by putting my shadow over the LDR or moving my hand closer and farther from it. I personally think the theremin sounds better when you have it at a higher pitch range.
So, as you can see, this little optical theremin makes some very cool music indeed. So, good luck building this, and put any questions in the comments below. Also, stay tuned for my next video, where I'll be showing you how to build an automatic robo rolly backpack, such as this. As always, thanks for watching and good luck building your theremin.